Hello, I'm Amanda and today I thought we would have just a little chat about a few of the essential quilting tools that I think are the most important to have when you are first beginning to quilt. First, let's start off with some books. I think it's really essential that you have some really good quality quilting books in your library. I pulled out two books from my library that I think are really good for beginners. The first one is this one. This is a quilting step-by-step -step book. It deals with patchwork and applique techniques as well as making up your own blocks. But if you're a beginner that's possibly a little bit too advanced for you so don't worry about that. And the other one is this book by Elizabeth Hartman called The Practical Guide to Patchwork. Both of these books break down the essential steps to quilt making. They tell you how to read a pattern, how to construct a block, how to baste a quilt, how to bind a quilt, and pretty much everything else in between. And that's what you want from a good quilting book. It will tell you what to do at each and every single step of the way when you are making a quilt. So let's get into some of the tools that you will need. Starting off with some good quality rotary blades. The rotary blades that I use are by Fiskars and I have two sizes. This smaller one is a 28mm, this one I use for a lot of curves and trimming. And this one here is a 45mm, this one is sort of the essential one that I think you need when you're first beginning. You will use a 45mm rotary blade when you are just doing all your basic cutting, cutting all your strips and your squares ready for piecing. I particularly like this type of rotary cutter. One, it's light, not too heavy in your hand, and it's also really easy to retract the blade with this little grey knob thing. Along with the rotary blades, you'll also need a really basic ruler. This particular ruler is a 14 by 5 inch size, and it's marked in inches. It also has degree lines on it, so if you want to do any sort of bias cutting or triangles or anything else that sort of is on an angle, this ruler will help you do that. The purpose of these rulers is to help you cut a straight line when you're using your rotary blade on top of your cutting mat, which we will talk about next. So this is a cutting mat. Mine's quite big and can't really quite fit in the shot, but this is a self-healing rotary mat and this is what you would use to cut out your fabric with a rotary blade. You can get cutting mats that are either imperial, which is inches, or metric, which is centimeters. This particular one is inches. Traditionally, patchwork and quilting is measured in inches and it's, it just sort of helps to have a mat that corresponds with the measurements that you have in a pattern that you're making. This cutting mat has a grid formation and it also has little measurements right up to 1 8 of an inch, which you will need because cutting in patchwork is very, very precise and you have to cut what it tells you to. When you are looking for a good quality cutting mat, make sure that it is self-healing because it will last longer and just also make sure that it's double-sided. Once one side gets all ready and tatty, you can just easily flip it over and use it again. Just ensure with your cutting mat that you always leave it on a flat surface and out of the heat because it will make it warp and there's nothing worse than having a wobbly cutting mat. Yeah. Next up, it is essential that you have a good pair of fabric scissors. I recommend that you try and get ones that are priced reasonably good. If you want them to last a while, as well as feel really nice in your hand and cut really smoothly, I would recommend to spend about $30 to $40 on a really good pair of scissors. I've had these particular fabric scissors ooh, for about four years, maybe longer, and they're still as sharp as the day that I bought them. And I think I paid about $40 for these. So if you spend the money, then you'll get good quality and it will last you quite a long time. The other type of scissor that I think is essential for you to have are just little snips. These ones have a nice pointy end and they're nice and little. I use these for trimming off the little threads off the ends of my blocks. I also use them to trim off any rogue threads that are coming up through my quilt tops. And because they have the little point at the top, it's really easy to get right down at the root of the thread without cutting the fabric essentially. 
Okay, so let's talk about pins. The type of pins that you get are totally up to you. By that, I mean you can get the ones with the little ball heads on top of it, or you can get ones that have the little flat heads, which I have. I particularly like to use flathead pins because it just allows the piece that you pin together to lay flat when you're sewing it through the sewing machine. They're also a lot easier to sort of hold in your hand. You can hold them by the little flat bit. These particular ones are no melt ones, so that means that I can still have them pinned in to my fabric and iron over them and the little plastic head won't melt. So essentially when you're looking for pins, get ones that are either flathead or if you are going to go for the ones with the little balls on the top of it, make sure that both of them say that they are non-melting or no melt, which means they won't melt when you put the iron over them. Make sure they're also quite long so that you can really get them into the fabric so that the fabric won't move when you're sewing it. You will also need a good long tape measure. This is the one that I have. This one is over three meters long. Try and get one that is longer than the basic 150 centimeter tape measure because you will end up making quilts that are bigger than that and it'll just be so much easier if you know that you've got an extra long tape measure for when you want to measure out the size of your quilt backs or your batting. I also use my tape measure as a gauge for when I'm measuring up sashing as well as block placements and anything else that really comes up that needs measuring with a tape measure. Next let's talk about thread. I think it's totally up to you whether you want to use a cotton or a polyester thread. The only thing that I recommend is that you buy good quality. Don't go buying like the bargain bin type of threads because they will shred your sewing machine. They will just ruin everything and from experience cheap threads will melt when you iron them and you'll have a quilt top that will start just falling apart and you'll be very very sad and it'll be the end of the world so buy good quality thread if you're in Australia I recommend you buy Gudeman thread this is the cotton with the little orangey yellow on the top and this is the polyester and I mainly use polyester in all of my piecing as well as my quilting. I used to use pure white in all of my piecing. Again, that's just a preference for me. But over the last six months or so, I've been going for like an off-white creamy kind of thread. I just think it blends in better to all the different types of fabrics that I use. And white can sometimes just sort of stand out. Of course, it is totally up to you whether you want to match thread to the fabric that you're sewing I mean if you want to do that then that's cool I just find that if I keep the one thread color in my machine I can just whiz through everything and plus I'm lazy I just don't want to change the thread on my machine pretty much so with threads come seams and with seams comes mistakes we all make them and with that you should have a really really good quality seam ripper Woo! now I've talked about this particular seam ripper before in my fire quilting tools I couldn't live without video which I will link up somewhere here this is a really awesome seam ripper that's just sort of like that next step up from the real cheap basic seam rippers that you'll either get in like a beginner's sewing pack or with your machine this one is from Clover it is really really good quality feels really nice in your hand it's really light and the little point will get under the most tightest of seam lengths if you've done a really really short seam length and you've made a mistake you bug it up somewhere this will get right under that and get it out so I think this one is definitely essential for those of you who are beginning and are prone to making mistakes which is fine because you are a beginner and we've all been there and you will learn from those mistakes and it will make you a better quilter. This next essential tool will just make everything lie flat and beautiful and pristine. The most wrinkliest fabric and seam line that you have made will become perfect for this. And that is an iron. This iron is by Philips. It's called Azul. Azul. Make sure that you just have an iron that works really well. It has a cotton setting and adjustable steam pressure. You don't want to have the steam on like full ball. 
because you'll burn your fingers. I've done that plenty of times. You will use your iron when you are pressing out your seams so that everything matches up. When you are patching your quilt up together, you want everything to be lying flat and you want everything to be nice and crisp and your iron will help you do that. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is basting. Now with basting, that is basting the quilt together with a bottom, the batting in the middle and the quilt on top. I'm going to give you two options of tools that will help you baste your quilt. Number one is pins. I have a whole jar full of safety pins. Majority of them are curved safety pins, so it just means they have a nice bend through them, which helps you to put them through all three layers at one time and just secure it off. A lot of quilters use this method to baste their, their quilts. It's a good method, it takes time, but it's a really good technique to use when you're basting a quilt. Now, if you're like me and you have no patience of doing any of that, then I recommend this. This is Quilt Basting Spray. This essentially eliminates the need to pin baste your quilts. You're able just to spray it onto all your layers. I usually then just iron them all together just to make sure everything's nice and flat and then you are ready to go and quilt your quilt. The only thing that I'm going to say about quilt basting spray is that you need to do it in a really well ventilated space because it is really quite strong and smelly and it's really dangerous if you sort of inhale it over and over and over again just like any sort of spray adhesive chemical. Just be safe and not stupid when you're using this pretty much. And of course you'll also need a sewing machine. If you are one of those brave quilters who are going to be doing everything by hand, I applaud you. But with your sewing machine just make sure that you have the capacity to do a quarter inch seam either with a quarter inch foot or by the markings that are on the plate underneath the foot. I'm not going to go too much more into detail about the sewing machine that you need because I'm thinking I might do a separate video based on that. Be on the lookout for that very, very soon. So there is a very basic list of all the different tools that I think you'll need as a beginner. If there's anything that I've missed that you think is essential for a beginner, let me know. Tell me down in the comments below. Share that knowledge for everyone else to see. If you are a keen blog reader, don't forget to check out my blog. It's just at 3 and 3 .net. I'd love to have you come over and have a look and say hi. If you are a newbie to patchwork and quilting, don't forget to check out all of my quilt block tutorials. I have linked them up here. They're also linked down in the description box below. Check them out because they have been made especially for you. So thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you sometime very, very soon. Bye. These ones are curved. They're curved. By the way, it's not on, so I'm not hurting myself.